One day, the novelist Erwin Shaw was dining in a fine French restaurant, but he had to wait an absurd length of time for the waiter to come and take his order. He waited and waited, and still the waiter did not come, and he was becoming very impatient. Finally, the maitre d' came over and politely told him that the specialty of the house was snails. He said, I know, and you have them dressed up as waiters. None of us likes to be kept waiting. None of us likes to spend our time waiting for anything. When we go to the doctor's office, we often have to wait in a room called the waiting room. We don't like that. We don't like to wait for anything in our life. Usually, we consider it a wasted period of time. Yet we are now in the season of waiting, the season of waiting called Advent, and the season of waiting called our earthly life. We wait for something more than what we see, something more than what we have. Our whole life is spent in waiting. How do we view that period of waiting? The philosopher Peter Kreeft once said that in the age of hope, people looked up at the night sky and saw the heavens. In an age of hopelessness, they call it simply space. How do we regard the world around us? Do we see the heavenly in everything around us? Do we look up and see the heavens? Or do we look up and around us and see merely empty space? In an age of hope, we see the heavens. In an age of hopelessness, we see merely space. One of my hobbies is dabbling in foreign languages. I was charmed to discover that in Spanish the same word, esperar, is used for waiting and for hoping. To wait is to hope, because when we hope for something, we do not see space or emptiness, but we see something already there. To wait is to hope. And no one realizes this more than a little child. For a child, waiting is the same thing as hoping. A child can wait with so much excitement and joy. When I was growing up, our family had many traditions, especially during that magical time of waiting called Advent. One of those traditions came, like most of the Christmas traditions in this country, from Germany a long time ago. It was called the Advent Calendar. An Advent Calendar has a series of paper windows to be opened one by one. These are numbered for the days of December, 1 through 24. Every evening we children would gather together with our parents in great excitement, great joy, great expectation to open the new window. On the first day of Advent, one of us would be chosen to open the window marked number one. As we reverently and excitedly opened that little paper door, we kept our eyes open to see what was behind that window and it was always a picture of something to do with the beautiful Christmas story. Perhaps it was a shepherd's staff. Perhaps it was the ox or the ass from Bethlehem. Perhaps an angel. Perhaps the wooden manger. We would watch in fascination to see the beauty of that picture revealed to us. And then came day number two, the second day of December. 
and another child would be chosen to open that window. Again, we would wait with great excitement to see what picture would be waiting for us. All the way through December, it was the same, until that final window came around, marked 24. That was opened on the evening of Christmas Eve, and it was always the biggest window on the calendar. The older ones among us remembered what was going to be under that window. The younger ones didn't know yet or had forgotten. But we all waited with great anticipation and excitement, because behind that window, opened on that magical evening of Christmas Eve, was a beautiful picture of the baby Jesus himself. A wonderful tradition. No one can wait with as much excitement as a child, and no one can hope with as much joy as a child. We adults tend to be more pessimistic. Where we see a hopeless end, a child sees endless hope. We look up into the night sky and we see space, emptiness. A child looks up and sees the heavens. Advent is the time of waiting, the time of hope. What a beautiful thing to discover through the Advent calendar that what we were waiting for, what we were hoping for, was there with us all the time under the thinnest piece of paper, under a little window. We just had to open a window. We just had to open our eyes to see it already there with us. So it is throughout our life. What we are waiting for, what we are hoping for, is already here with us. Let us open our windows. Let us open our hearts. Let us open our eyes and see. We can also wait with excitement. We can also hope with joy. We can also see as a child sees. Let us look up toward the night sky with the eyes of a child and see not space but the heavens. Let us rediscover in ourselves the excitement of waiting. Let us rekindle the joy of hope so that at the end of the advent of Christmas and at the end of the advent of life, as we open that final window in the joyful expectation of seeing a divine child, we may gaze there in wonderment at the image of our own self. <laughs>